welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Carnival Zombie. This is a 1-6 to six player action point cooperative zombie game where you take the role of a group of characters moving through the city of Venice trying to escape from the growing number of zombies and the floods that are sinking the city. How do you escape? Well, you're going to be moving through the city fighting the hordes of zombies trying to escape through one of the escape options before all of the players end up incapacitated or starting in a sunken location. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Carnival Zombie. Now let's take a look at the components. Some of the components are from the deluxe edition of the game. You have the double-sided main game board. One side has the Venice map, and the other side has the Milan map. On the board, in the top left, you have the map. Below that is your setup. Below that is the calendar tickets. Next to the tickets are the clock. You have sunrise, day, sunset, night, and dawn. At the bottom, you have the terror track. This also shows your turn order. In the bottom right of the map, you have storage. At the top, you have the basic infected. Going down the right side, you have the boss area. In the middle is the tactical map and refuge. And the little boxes are barricade boxes. The map is made up of spaces. Each quadrant is called a pit. Each of the half quadrants are caves. Each circle around the map is a ring, calendar marker, clock marker, group marker, holy bomb marker, path marker, obstacle tiles. These have the ring number and blue and black dots. This is representative of the map. Fortification tiles, these go in the refuge area and they have orange dots. Corpses or boat tile, bridge or cemetery tile, foundering tokens, these indicate sunk locations, scenario tokens, blessing tokens, boat tokens, order tokens, nightmare cards. In the top you have the character, in the top right the location, below that is the event and description, and then the bottom left is the search, and the bottom right is the cave or pit. Boss card. These have the name and depiction, the attack strength, the life number, movement, and then the power. Carnifex card. Boss miniatures or standees, character miniatures or standees, stress markers, character sheets. On the character sheet you have the name, depiction, the assault number, night ability, day ability, and the weapon held. Item cards. This has a title, depiction, and then a description. Player aids, reference sheet, finale sheet, scenario sheets. These contain in-game conditions and setup. Cloth bag and cubes. The green cubes are vermin, white cubes are bargast, the violet are moloch, gray are goliath, yellow are tool, blue are survivors, red are wounds, brown are barricades, and black are paranoia. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three-player game, which takes 15 steps. Step one, place the main board in the center of the play area. Step two, shuffle and place the nightmare deck next to the board. Step three, shuffle and place the boss deck next to the board. Step four, choose a character. Based on the number of players, you'll choose a number of characters. So since this is a three-player game, we're going to choose two characters apiece. Step five, separate, shuffle, and place the item decks next to the board. Step six, for each of your characters, get the corresponding character sheet and miniature. You'll place them in the center of your player area. Step seven, choose activation order. Randomly place your character's stress markers on the starting boxes on the stress track. Step eight, choose a difficulty and place group markers. Based on the difficulty, place the group marker on the matching starting symbol on the map. Step nine, place the clock marker on the dawn position on the clock. Step 10, place the calendar marker on the day position of ticket one. Step 11, separate and place obstacles and fortification tiles next to the main board. Step 12, place the pile of corpses next to the board. Step 13, place cubes in the abyss or bag. Place all infected or green, white, violet, and gray in the abyss, along with a number of survivor and paranoia cubes based on your difficulty. Step 14, create supply pools next to the board for survivors, wounds, foundering tokens, terrains, and barricades. Step 15, this is skipped in the scenarios, but for your campaign, you would carry out the story so far. You would resolve for each character in activation order. You would draw one cube and carry out effects based on the color. Then you would choose the keep looking or hide. If you continue for the third time in a row, you would draw a boss card, gain stress, 
and then draw an item card or gain a barricade. For the scenario, it is recommended that you start with the Plague in Venice for your first game. Instead of step 15, you would resolve exceptions on the scenario sheet. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of rounds until the end game condition is met. For each scenario, the loss and victory conditions are listed on the scenario sheet. For the campaign, you must flee the city or kill the Levathian. And if you start a night in a sunken location, or if all the players are incapacitated, you lose. A round. A round consists of two phases. Day, when the group moves, and night, when the group fights. Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, the day phase. Place the clock marker on the sunrise position, and then perform sunrise rituals and carry out the day. The sunrise rituals. This takes three steps. Step one, reshuffle the nightmare deck with the discarded cards. Step two, place a foundering token. Place a foundering token on the random location on the top nightmare card. If it is already sunk, you will sink the next location with a higher number. And if all are sunk with a higher number, then the first available with a lower number. Step three, draw an event. Draw a nightmare card and carry out the event. Then move the clock marker to the first day space. Carrying out the day. This takes two steps. Step one, group movement. You'll spend hours to move. Each alley costs one, and then plus one or plus two for difficult paths, and plus one when moving from a sunken location. Keep in mind that beginning in day two, you start your move in the same direction you fled in the previous dawn. Then you'll move the clock a number of hours taken to move. Step two, perform character actions. For each day hour left, each player will choose an action for each character. There are six possible actions. The first available action is rest, where you will lower your stress by two on the terror track. The second possible action, barricade. Put three barricades in storage. The third possible action is ability. You would use your day ability. The fourth possible action is search. Draw a nightmare card and resolve the search. If it is an item, you would draw an item. If it is a survivor, you would place a survivor cube in the abyss. When you are out of survivors, you would gain an item instead. If it is infected, you would gain one stress and then choose an item or a survivor. The fifth available action is the special action. This is only for the first player and if it is available in that location. And the sixth possible action is reanimate. You put the stress marker back to five of another incapacitated character, and that character can place their figure back in the refuge. Keep in mind that incapacitated characters cannot perform actions during day or night, and you would remove your stress marker and figure from the board until you have been reanimated. Then you would advance the clock marker to the sunset. Phase two, the night phase. You would move the calendar marker to the night. During this phase, you have the sunset ritual, carrying out the night and dawn. The sunset ritual, this takes four steps. Step one, discover terrain. Around your location, you will see blue and black obstacles as well as gold fortifications. The first player will draw a tile for each dot and a nightmare card for each to show the location. Step two, you'll place barricades. Place all barricades from storage into boxes around the refuge. Step three, in activation order, place characters in the refuge space of your choice. Step four, the boss entrance. For each boss in the boss area, draw a nightmare card and place the boss miniature or standee in ring three of that cave. And then you'll move the clock marker. Carrying out the night. For each night hour, you would carry out six steps in order. Step one, use items. You can use cross items and first night icon if it is the first hour. Step two, infected entrance. Draw three random abyss cubes for each ring three space. If infected, put it in that space. If paranoia, you would place it on the character stress track in that pit, or you would choose if none. You cannot use plus one stress for a second action while it is there. If it was a survivor cube and no boss or infected, is in that cave at the end of the night, they are rescued and put in storage, and if not, eliminated from the game. Step three, infected and boss movement. Move each a number of spaces toward the refuge in their pit equal to the number on their move value. If in ring one, and there are no barricades, they enter the barricade boxes, one for each infected or three for boss. 
Step four, character activation. In activation order, perform one action per character and once per hour, plus one stress for a second action. The four possible actions that you can take. The first, move. You may move to another refuge space. The second possible action, fire. In the pit, you would fire on infected or bosses. They have to be in your pit, in range of your firearm, and closest cave to your refuge. Infected would go first in those spaces with bosses unless you have an explosive ammo. And you cannot target infected or bosses that are in barricades. You must use plus one stress as if they were not there. Keep in mind that you cannot divide between caves. The third possible action, assault. Deal assault value to infected or bosses in barricade spaces. Fourth possible action, survivor. Take a survivor from storage and place it on a boss card to delay the boss. The boss doesn't move or attack until the next hour. Keep in mind that when you eliminate infected, you must drop them on the pile of corpses. Any falling off that tile go back to ring three and give you a max plus one stress. Also keep in mind that you use wounds to determine boss health. When defeating a boss you would recover two stress and remove a paranoia from a character or draw an item card. You can't focus two different character attacks on the same target in the same hour. Step five, infected and boss attack. All infected and bosses in ring one, attack. The group decides the target in the refuge space, and if none, any can be chosen. If they are not in a barricade box, you would eliminate one barricade for each attack. You can cancel an attack by eliminating a survivor from storage or discarding an item from the target. The attack value is added to the character's stress. And then step six, time advances. And then you would repeat this each hour until the dawn. The dawn. You would carry out the dawn in five steps. Step one, determine the flee direction. The group will choose a direction that they will move the next day. Step two, each character performs an assault action and can target any boss infected in that pit. Step three, remove survivors from bosses and return them to the box. Step four, bosses or infected left in that quadrant attack. And step five, refresh. Place barricades back in storage, put rescued survivors in storage, remove infected from the map and with the corpses place them back in the abyss, remove bosses and place them next to their card, place paranoia back in the abyss, remove characters and terrains, move the clock and calendar markers to the day position on the next ticket, then days and nights or rounds will continue until the in game condition is met. Players will automatically lose if the night begins in a sunk location or all players are incapacitated. And if the players meet their victory conditions, the players will survive and win Carnival Zombie.